Open rebuke is better than secret love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Proverbs 27, 4 through 6. I guess Cameron Simon got what was coming to him. UFC Fight Night, Nama Yunus vs. Hebas just ended, and it was honestly an okay card. It was a good card. It's worth watching the recap for the highlights of the night, but there was a lot of weird stuff that happened on the card. A man got full-blown bit. Thug Rose got back to winning ways, and little Cameron Simon got honestly embarrassed. I feel bad for the man, and... We are finally back to main event winning ways on the channel. The main event curse is over. Thug Rose pulled through for me, and I couldn't be happier. So let's dive in to my full card event recap and breakdown. Before we do that, though, drop a like on the stream. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. I post a wide variety of MMA content. I just posted... A Roadhouse review. Go check it out. I post recaps like this, picks videos, all sorts of stuff. And shout out to the topology winner, Big Dog 1400. He had some great picks, to be honest. 11 correct picks on yesterday's card. That's insane. If you are interested, our topology group is just like a fantasy MMA leaderboard where we compete each week on the UFC events for points. It's free to join, free to play. If you are interested, there's a link in the description of the video below. But let's dive into the actual full card breakdown here. The prelim started out with Muhammad Usman versus Mick Parkin. Now, I'm just going to say, I'm not going to spend too much time whining about unranked heavyweight outcomes of fights, just like I wouldn't for WMMA, which we'll get to later. This was a Robert. Okay, McParkin was out damaged. You know, this fight was arguably 3 0 Usman, at least the first two rounds, Usman, or whatever. I can't really remember. It's not that important. And guess what? I'm not going to watch it back. I don't really care that much about the fate of Muhammad Usman. Maybe it's karma, family karma for all the PEDs and stuff like that. But listen, Mick Park and the plotty bomb with no power didn't do anything to Mohamed Usman in that fight. Didn't hurt him at all. So I don't care if he mixed it up and landed a couple more tapping low kicks. All right, he got out damaged. So I, whatever, I don't care. Mick Parkin's a bum though, and he has the longest fight win streak at heavyweight. Heavyweight's the worst division on earth. He has a three fight win streak and he's the highest in the division or whatever. It's insane. Let's move on to Igor Da Silva versus Andre Lima. This was a fun fight for what it was. This is the biting fight. I'm sure a lot of people are just going to be here for that. It was a really fun first round. Watch it back. It was crazy. Both guys were game. Both guys were bringing it. And honestly, Igor Da Silva was, had, had his moments, especially in the start of the round. Andre Silva started to pull ahead and like maybe Igor Da Silva knew that in the second round because bro just shoved his face in between Lima's arms and bit him. And they called the fight off. Now, you know, there's some people who are a little bit upset with that. I personally wanted to see the fight continue, but it's such an egregious foul that it's like, just do no con, like DQ the guy, right? It's like, I get people want to see this stuff continue. And people have made some arguments I saw there that it's like, oh, people get kneed in the head and they continue the fight like Anthony Smith. Well, it's a little bit different than getting bit. It's like way more like excusable to knee someone illegally or upkick someone like Toffa did later in the fight where her being didn't even pause the action than it is just to bite someone. Biting is like clear intent and it had both rows of teeth. Bro had his mouth guard somehow balanced in between on his tongue and he had slipped that out because it wasn't on the floor. There was no moment where the action was stopped in his mouth guard. There was no mouth guard on the floor. It was in his mouth or whatever and he was biting the guy. Like I, I have no problem with de- DQing him and cutting him. He seems like a schizo. We'll move on to the Montserrat Rendon versus Daria Zeljakova fight. This was a robbery as well. Don't see how you could have scored it to Zeljakova on damage. I, again, I'm not going to waste too much time. Just like I'm not going to whine about a unranked fat heavyweights robbery in there. I don't care. Like This fight was just really poorly scored in my personal opinion. So let's just move right on up to the Jero Aarons versus Steven Ewan. This is when the fights really started to pick up on the card. There's like a midsection of the card, the late prelims and the early portion of the main card were really, really good. Like, action-packed, a lot of great fights on them. And this Aaron's versus Win fight was 
really good. Now, Aaron's won it all dominantly, but it got fight of the night deservedly because it was just a really good fight. Win was game. He was trying to stay in it right until the very last second of the third. And he honestly had more in his tank. You, at the, for the last like minute and a half or whatever of the third round, Aaron's was running backwards. But for the majority of that fight, he was cracking Win with these crazy bombs. I'm surprised Win's chin uh, stood up. Uh, because honestly, it was trending at the very start. Win was looking like, oh, he's going to get the better of him. He caught a kick, dropped him, but Aaron's was right back into it. And he honestly won the first up, first round. He had really nice uppercuts, really nice crosses to the body and stuff. Steve was basically a punching bag. Steve was basically a punching bag, but a really game one. He deserves that bonus, you know, for not quitting. We'll get to a quitter later. We'll, P P Puello. We'll get up to Miles Johns versus Cody Gibson. Now, Cody Gibson's just a bomb. It's kind of funny to see all these old tough guys like Gibson and Hollywood like, just get mogged tonight. Um, hey, is Brian, Brian Battle is the last ultimate fighter. Regardless, though, it was a decent fight. It wasn't the greatest fight, this Johns versus Gibson fight, but it was good. Uh, I mean, like, Gibson is just, man, he is really lacking some fight IQ, and that's impossible to fix at his 36 years old age. He, he kept trying to do these level change, but they were like slow ass level changes. There's a moment where he got dropped by a shoulder rush by Miles Johns. And then he just stayed on bottom. He does have a pretty active guard, and he was able to neutralize Johns. I think that was in the first round. That was in the first round. But he started mogging him, just mogging him. Again, same thing in the round three, right? He just, like, mogged Gibson. He was beating him on the feet, and uh, he was able to, like, stall out in the clinch and stuff like that. So just really took that fight. Um, Gibson's garbage, but it was a good win for John. Uh, Ricardo Ramos versus Julian Arosa was next, and this was a fun fight. Just barely around, so really easy to watch back. Uh, Ricardo Ramos was beating the crap out of Julian Arosa. Just he was dropping glass chin Arosa, landing nasty, a uh, big shots on him. He almost got him with that spinning elbow. Kind of made his fourth spinning elbow KO in the UFC or whatever. But Arosa got a surprise guillotine. He pulled it, and Ricardo Ramos. It was like pretty deep. It was under the neck and stuff like that, under the chin. Sorry, and. Ricardo almost like postured up, pulled up a rose off the ground, like lifted him up, but didn't try to slam or anything, just tapped. So it was a, a little bit, it wasn't like a quid. It wasn't, he's not a quitter by any means. It wouldn't make sense to quit in a fight where you're beating the crap out of Arosa. And this is like Arosa's first and only moment. That's all he needed though. But the, the thing is, it seemed like maybe a panicky thing. Maybe not so much confidence. So definitely work on that. You know, get your boys to choke you out in the chair, my guess, pause. But because Ricardo Ramos has got power. Um, I thought he had that Arosa fight in the bag. But. That's why we love MMA, right? Comeback wins like Arosa. So definitely great for him. Kurt Holobaugh versus Trey Ogden was the featured prelim. Not the funnest fight. Majority of it played out on the ground with Trey Ogden just half guard camping, mogging. Uh, half guard mogging, I should say, because it wasn't half guard camping. He was half guard mogging Holobaugh. And there were moments where Holobaugh was worried. He was eating a lot of shots. And there were these short, stiff, like shovel hooks and whatever, right? And there's a lot of power on them. Trey Ogden's a stocky lightweight. He's got some power to him. Um, I'm happy with this because my prelims picks were botched, but we racked it together with the featured prelim, and that's all that matters, right? Like, the main event and the featured prelim are the only two fights that matter, to get correct. Fernando Padilla versus Luis Pauelo opened up the main card. And listen, this is what I'm talking about when I'm saying there's a quitter here. So it's not like Pauelo wasn't game from the start, but Padilla was getting the better of the striking on the feet, and he ended up dropping Pauelo and ground and pounding him pretty brutally. And Puello was able to escape, get back to his feet, and Padilla took that opportunity to latch up a choke and immediate tap. No, try to, no, no trying to fight it, no nothing from Puello. And I consider it a tapping to strikes because he was getting brutalized so bad by Padilla before that that I believe he just wanted it out. I think it was just a... Like, he just took that first opportunity. It's not to say that that submission wouldn't have put him out or he wouldn't have needed a tap but he did it it was like the ricardo ramos one but instead of just out of panic and maybe inexperience Puello did this out of complete cowardice because he was getting the crap you know it was like the opposite of the arosa fight because he was losing definitively so a uh, fun fight though uh definitely worth watching back next up we have the yusef zalal versus billy quarantello fight and man right from the start billy quarantello looked off he was like doing these blitzes but well out of range and just throwing that air, and Yusef was able to cut the angle, and then land some nice low, he was landing some nice low kicks on him, and he was getting these really nice trips. He got a trip in the first round, and a trip in the second round, that I, it's what won him the fight, because in the first, he got it, and was able to dominate Billy Quarantillo, take his back, and threaten him with the choke right till the end of the round, and then in the second, he just recreated that trip sequence, took his back, and choked him out. 
It was actually a great performance from Zalal. That's a good sign because you can just like, Billy Quarantillo's still game and he still gives like featherweights like right outside the rankings, a tough fight and stuff. So you can jump with a dominant performance like that. Zalal can get like jumped up a bit into like the low featherweight rankings, no problem. And he's an exciting new prospect. Featherweight needs prospects. So I'm happy Zalal got that win and I'm happy he's looking that good. Peyton Talbot versus Cameron Simon. Well, who would have guessed that having two mothers is the best base for MMA? Who would have guessed that chakra maxing and sunning your balls at Joshua Tree is the best base for MMA? Who would have guessed that the least masculine Southern Californian quirked up mixed race boy Peyton Talbot is stronger than the strongest Afrikaans Little boy Cameron Simon. Oi, Lekka! South Africa! So. No, oh, South Africa is so good! Or for, as a, a bit different. Well, they get. They cry and get red in the face and start throwing spin kicks when they start getting the crap beaten out of them by a chakra maxine. Southern Californian. New age. Like, son of hippies. Peyton Talbot. Peyton Talbot would beat the living crap. Out of Cameron's, I mean, he looked really good. Now, people are saying, oh, I want to see him versus Sean. It's a shut, shut the hell up. This is Bantamweight. First of all, he's probably not even going to be fighting for the rankings for a year or so. Like, he's got to rack together. Dude, Jonathan Martinez didn't even get into the rankings until he got to like his six, six KO win streak or whatever. Like, Mario Batista just got into the rankings. Like, it's, it's really hard to get into the rankings in Bantamweight. And I, Hope they don't just throw Talbot up to freaking Sean O'Malley or people at the top of Bantamweight. He's beating Cameron Simon, but let's chill. Let's see some more fun unranked fights, especially with guys around his same age and experience level. I think he's got a lot of potential. He's looking really good. He's got crazy power, good chin. He had no respect for Cameron Simon. Cameron Simon was throwing everything he had. I mean, he was landing some good shots, landing some low kicks, landing some one twos up top and stuff like that. Going to the body, nothing. He had nothing for it. Cameron Simon even started to spam. He tried the low kick cheat. And this is why I don't feel that bad for Cameron Simon. You can be like, I feel, I hope he bumps back. He's fake nice. He's a cheater. And everyone, there's all this cope. Like, look at me. He doesn't really cheat. He just throws his low kicks up into the, up into the high thigh. Why? Why? What's the point of throwing a low kick up into someone's thigh? Unless you're hoping it glances up to become a low blow. It's, everyone knows, first of all, thigh low kicks are, dumb as heck anyway unless you're throwing like they're stupid what we're at bantam weight you can probably get kicked on the thigh all day long calves knees and stuff it's cheating i kick into my opponent's upper thigh right beside his groin that's cheating i aim for it when he does a level change that's cheating it's funny that peyton tablet just laughed at him and was like come on no pause come on i want to beat the crap out of you and he did Peter Capit went for a full round. Cameron Simon had nothing for him at all. There wasn't a mark, barely a drop of sweat on Peyton Talbot at the end of that fight, and he put him out at the start of the second round. Uh, next up, we had Edmund Chabazi versus AJ Dobson. Man, I picked AJ Dobson, and he was looking really good at the start. He was cracking Edmund with some nice uh, one twos up top. You know, he had snapped Edge Chabazian's head back. Chabazian was able to get a takedown, I believe, or reverse something at one point, right? And then. Dobson was like willingly staying in his guard. Not smart, to be honest. They got back to their feet, and Edmund honestly just, to be honest, actually it was smart. Why am I criticizing AJ Dobson? He fought a great round. He did fight a great round. He was dominating Edmund Shabazian. Edmund Shabazian still has heat in his hands, though, and I like to see his chin hold up. I mean, it's the first round, though. It's like, we didn't, like, listen, anyone goes, like, Edmund's gonna be coming back. He's gonna be doing his title. No, he's not. He can still beat people in the first round. He's a dangerous fighter in the first round. That's why he's still, like, a good win. Like, it's not, he's not a scrub. Right? He's a dangerous fighter. It's just like if you can survive him, break him down, and then like take him into the second or take him in the deep waters, you're pretty much going to finish him. He's a hard fight in the first, and he proved that to AJ Dobbs and finishing him within like, you know, 30 seconds of the end of the round, just cracked him, dropped him. And... Dude, Mark Smith uh, almost let a brother die. Uh, Mark Smith was giving AJ Dobbs in every chance he absolutely could to just somehow wake up because he was out cold eating bunch of crap man that was brutal that was a brutal ko um honestly it's how cameron simon ko should have went carl williams versus justin toffa was a terrible boring fight it was like a wild hog versus a domesticated pig right carl williams the wild hog 
with just more spunk paws and half uh, just basically laying on his back strap half the fight up on his ham hocks you know what I mean there was a funny moment where Tafa was able to like scramble and reverse a takedown or, or no he cracked Dobson and was trying to pursue the finish but he was like so fat he couldn't finish hey you know what's the tale of this fight Tafa's too fat to get a finish dude cause he had the moment he created the moment he's too fat to get a finish he wasn't able to turn around in time someone in my chat said we're lucky he wasn't because if he did it would have thrown the earth's axis off its tilt but Carl Williams got the decision win in a boring fight so not much more to say about that I uh feel bad for my mustache bro Justin Taffa but we'll move on to the main event listen Amanda Hebas versus Rose Nama Yunus I was actually uh, mainly talking in my chat I do live streams for the fight com uh, fights so every UFC event we cover on the channel hop into my live streams I'm usually live uh, right around the start of the cards during the prelims and I was chatting to my chatters about Roadhouse because I just watched Roadhouse. I made a review, like I mentioned earlier in the video. Check it out. It was a phenomenal film, and I was just really not feeling the Rose Hebas fight for the first two or three rounds until the end of the third because Hebas, I thought Rose took the first two rounds. She was doing enough with the control time and the significant strikes. It wasn't like Hebas was out damaging her or did anything. So, I, and that guy who was tweeting about 3 0 Hebas, he's crazy. And then Rose did lose the third because of all those elbows and the damage that Hebas got off. But you know, I thought it was 4-1, at least 3-2, if not, right? Like, I wasn't paying the most attention. I did watch the third, fourth, and fifth, though, with a closer eye. And I, I, I thought Rose won that fight. Good on Thug Rose. She's back in winning ways. Blanchfield Furora is the next fight night. Now, this is not the greatest main event, but it has a, some great fights on the card, like Joaquin Buckley versus Vicente Luque. So I'll be live for that event too if any of you guys are looking for a chill, vibing fight companion. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe. I post a wide variety of MMA content. So you're missing out if you're not turning on the bell and uh, subscribing to the channel and drop a like. I do appreciate it. I'd like to give a big thank you to all my channel members. Without you guys, the channel would not be possible. And a special shout out to my Lions here members. Poultice Gordon, Clarence, Mike Brannigan, Javier, Patrick Hall, Droid C, John Paul DeHoria, Jack Clash, Wings of Heart Problems, Boss Gags, Maximus Decimus 88, Hans on Fire, Uniform Down, Franz, Jesse on Estrogen, Abdiel, TKH, Anti Rigo, Girth, Ninja Choke, David Brannica, Ghost Diaz, Sunny Nihilist, Andros Basileus, Guy Dude 5, Dark Star, Pigger, E Man, Zero, Cotton Ball, Lil Bloom, Brett Williams, Carter, Chase Prod, Johan Liber, Bogdan, Frenchy Loves Fights, Mogwong Zerg Zerg, G Money 88, DJ Giggles, Jimmy D. Dime, papi. Dime, mami.